Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Loading. Um, the other day, I saw this uh, uh, video by Entagma. It's uh, basically uh, like a video um, kind of explaining how you can create this kind of a knitting art um, using Houdini. And uh, everything is using nodes. And then he explained uh, the process kind of like a... He, he start with a flat kind of a, a flat like a square, just like a plan planner, and then based on planner, he, he knows that he can make the, this kind of knitting pattern. He says that's a, and then he goes through and then talk about the UV and then kind of a, kind of try to projecting this uh, planner into the UV. So I, I got the idea. I haven't watched the whole video. I actually only kind of skipping through, um, but I'm thinking that. Um, Maybe we can kind of simulate that um, using SketchUp add-on in Blender. Um, so let's just uh, start to tackle how SketchUp can handle UV. There's probably like a few a uh, few different ways to approach this. We actually already have a couple of things like um, if I create a nose, that's a there's there's a UV textures in SketchUp, and there's also this adaptive polygons and adaptive edges. There are actually a couple of nodes that you can use to kind of make like a knitting pattern. Um, I have not tested yet, uh, but I think I should follow like uh, what Antakma did with us uh, Houdini. So basically, we need to at some point create a knitting pattern. Uh, but for now, I'll just play around with the UV first. This UV textures node in SketchUp is not to generate UV or to create a UV map. This is actually to read a UV of an object. So let's first of all do that. Um, if you are like a first timer Blender user and you never use Blender uh, UV um, layout map, uh, UV layout tools in Blender, uh, this is how you can do it. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, actually, I'm, I like doing UV in Blender. So basically, I normally start with uh, by introducing the seam. You can actually go like, uh, I think control, is that U? No, it's a control U. No, it's not. So it's a, uh, I actually forgot what it is. Maybe go to edit mode and then tap U. And then you can unwrap that way. And then if you unwrap that way, you get a square for each polygon face. But you might want to do like a more like smarter UV projection. Sometimes people do that, but maybe you want to do it more properly, like uh, creating seam and things like that. So I'll do that. So let's say I'm making a seam that's it's gonna be like a kind of like a cross kind of looking uh, UV. So I'm gonna do that, and then I think Control E is actually mark the seam. So by doing that, if you mark the seam and then you unwrap it, tap U and then unwrap, you start to get, okay, you start to get the idea, right? This thing is kind of unwrapping like a cloth. Of course, that's the idea of UV uh, mapping. You, you kind of, uh, you have like a surface and then you kind of make a cut, make a seam and then you kind of lay it out on the floor. So let's do it the same thing uh, here. I haven't, done, I haven't done this for a while. Uh, I think this is how you do it. You mark the seam. Uh, control E, mark the seam. So doing it like this, and then you just kind of unwrap it again. Um, yeah, I think I'm. Did I do it the wrong way? I better start again. I think. Start with the cube and then edit mode and I select some edges one, two, three, four, five and then I hit control E and then mark the seam and then tap A and then U unwrap so it start to get there I just need to make a cut somewhere here so here control E mark seam here mark seam there should be a way to look at the seam right over here. Try unwrapping again. Oh, anyway, that's that's the cross that I was talking about. So I'm gonna save this. 
This is a UV intro. So we have the UV, and now if we go back to Sphere Choke and look at the cube, we can access the UV. If I'm not wrong, uh, select the object. Oh, this thing doesn't update. Interesting. Maybe I need to use uh, objects in. Get selection, get the cube, plug the object, and then we can see the UV map. Now we can um, use things like a viewer draw to check out the UV. So this is actually a, a good start because now we can we have the UV being laid out and you have these objects. Um, if it's a simple, super simple object like this, it's very easy to create the knitting pattern, I guess. Very easy, you know, like uh, in a way if you have like a, if you have already the pattern to do the knitting, like uh, this kind of uh, pattern as a 3D object, you can easily use a polygon adaptive and then just assign it for each and every polygon face because they are all the same size and it's very very uh, simple to do that. Just imagine you are doing like a texturing and then the texture has to be um, kind of a looking like a knit and then for each texture like that there's a flat texture you want to actually create a real object. That's how how I think of uh, how you can do this knitting uh, problem. Um, I haven't tried the knitting pattern yet, but polygon, I think polygon adaptive is really how you can uh, kind of do this. It's actually in relation to the, there is an add-on for Blender called Tissue. So Tissue add-on is doing the polygon adaptive as well. Um, I think it's under create or under this guy. So Tissue Tools, okay, this is the latest version. They actually put the tools right here under T and CR create. Anyway, this uh, tissue tools, the dual mesh stuff. Um, tessellate. Yeah, I think tessellate is what you want. So if you have like a, even if you draw like a kind of like a grease pencil strokes like that, you can apply these strokes into each and every uh, phase of this polygon um, if you remember how so maybe that's what I should do here actually <clears throat> so I made this uh, grease pencil imagine this grease pencil is for the polygon phase um, let's go to the top view just for simplicity top view and orthographic and let's make uh, some kind of knitting pattern or something I don't know I don't know, I'm just gonna draw it using a grease pencil. I know it's, it's pretty silly things, but anyway, this knitting pattern should be, do it, uh, you, you should do it more properly. Now let's do um, the grease pencil thing. <clears throat> GP grease pencil. And let's grab our grease pencil, active frame, and we get this, uh, this pencil thing happening uh, we have multiple objects so I'm gonna join them yes I should have done this more properly but anyhow this uh, I can control the number of uh, sampling of this crisp pencil so this is imagine this is like a knitting pattern I'll do a better one next time uh, but this is like uh, something you can bake out and this has become like a like a real object right and you can turn it into maybe like a skin modifier and give a root for each one of them and then scale it so imagine this is like a knitting pattern and then you want to apply this for every polygon face here you can use the tissue add-on or you can use spare chalk as well so imagine this is your element and then you want to bring it in back into our UV thing 
we can do that very easily. So polygon adaptive adaptive polygons and then we're gonna use this guy as the the donor uh, let me do this properly I think let me try doing this anyway that's the donor this is and this is the recipient so there you go that's the main idea basically you want to just adapt this kind of uh, a pattern knitting pattern into each of every polygon face but with what the Antakma was doing actually um, they did something clever they adapt this thing back into the the, the original objects and and they are also kind of a um, for whatever seam they generate they actually kind of a they duplicate the vertices and then they they separate the object. So they kind of cutting the seam on the actual original objects. And um, probably I need to rewatch the video, but I think that's the the whole idea. Just adapting whatever knitting pattern you have on a single square back into the objects. But this is like this cube is super simple. So adapting knitting back into the cube is very simple. But if you have like Suzanne. Suzanne, and then you you want um, to apply the knitting pattern. You see, Suzanne has a, like a bigger polygon face, and then some some of them are smaller. And you can't just use a single knitting pattern. You can apply like this pattern to each and every uh, polygon of Suzanne. Um, I'll I can show you very quickly. So if you just use objects in, and just bring in uh, Suzanne. Oops, I think I draw. A lot of grease pencil there. I'm gonna redraw the pattern once again. Go to the top view and let's do the pattern more properly. I don't want to, to draw this but imagine this is like a knitting pattern anyway. We're gonna do a proper one in the next video, but this is just like the basic theory. So you got the knitting pattern right here. And maybe I need to increase this number. Um, let's do it like this. And update it. Hopefully this works. And you bring in Suzanne and then you apply the Suzanne into this guy and then you should be able to see um, this pattern will adapt into Suzanne head and yeah, hopefully this works. It might actually crash blender at this point. Should have saved it. Oh well, but that's anyway the theory, so... Okay, that's actually working. Um, let me move the cube. Okay, that's working. I should save this. So that's the... Um, the grease pencil strokes kind of adapting to Suzanne head. Let me turn off the points. I just have to recalculate. Oh, there you go. So imagine that's the knitting being applied for every single polygon face of Suzanne. It's not very efficient. It's better that if uh, the knitting pattern is kind of spread evenly into Susan head, and that requires some kind of uh, a different setup. But I think this is the uh, the basic idea. So we need to kind of need a way to kind of wrap around the UV, the flat UV back into the original Susan head. Well, the adaptive polygon, like I said, is kind of doing it, but this is not very efficient because it's kind of 
just replacing every single polygon face with the knitting pattern. This is kind of sufficient for a, like a quick uh, setup, but then again, it's not very efficient. So it's um, some people would just use a, like a normal 2D textures and bump or displacement map kind of to fake the look. And it, that's gonna work anyway, but if you want to make it like a 3D, like what Entagma was doing, then you need to maybe use the UV and kind of uh, wrap around the object again because you want in the end you um, so yeah that's pretty much it thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video thank you bye